You are listening to Wild About Arizona, the official podcast of the Arizona Game and Fish Department. And welcome to Wild About Arizona. I'm John Treeweiler with the Arizona Game and Fish Department. And today we're talking about the Christmas bird count. It's the appropriate for the holiday time of season. At least it's in the name there, the Christmas bird count. With us to talk about it is Chrissy Condred. Chrissy, thanks so much for being with us. Well, thank you so much for having me here today. So first of all, before we dive into the Christmas bird count, tell us about your role here at the Arizona Game and Fish Department. Well, I'm very lucky. I work with a great bunch of people in the Wildlife Management Division in Terrestrial Wildlife Branch. Uh, My main role is uh, processing and helping people get research permits, basically what they're called scientific activity licenses, to work with anything wildlife in Arizona. It's kind of exciting because I also kind of keep my finger on the pulse with what's going on. And the researchers, gosh, they're not just from Arizona. They're outside the U.S. and, of course, within the U.S. And, uh, you know, you learn a lot when you get to do something like that. So I'm very fortunate. And the other role I play is assisting our non-game bird program. And I get to do a lot of wonderful projects, parts of our coordinated bird monitoring program, and then also work with a lot of partners on Uh, regional projects. So you know all about the research (laughs) that is happening here in Arizona, whether they're from the state or not. Correct. And one of the other projects I get to work on with this uh, community science effort is the Christmas bird count, which we're here today, I know, to talk about. Of course. So uh, tell us about that, Chrissy, because people out there, there's obviously people that are familiar with it. They've been helping you do it a long time Mm -hmm. and there's people out there that are probably hearing this now for the first time going what's the christmas bird count so (laughs) explain that to us well the christmas bird count it started about a hundred oh this year's the 122nd anniversary of christmas bird counts and it's this huge community science effort people from all over um help you know monitor winning wintering bird populations uh by Uh, what has been established with these Christmas count bird circles. Uh, In Arizona, for example, there's 41 of them, and it's a 15-mile diameter circle, and there's areas designated within that that volunteers get together with an organizer for each circle, which is called a compiler. And they, you know, send people out to these different areas to count as many birds as they can on a designated day between December 14th to January 5th. Okay. (laughs) This is quite the effort. (laughs) It is a huge effort. I mean, um, these Christmas bird counts cover the whole Western Hemisphere. Uh, There's just over 2,000 Christmas bird count circles that have been designated that just over 80,000 people each year come out to do. So there's 40 circles in Arizona, but there's a, this is not just happening in Arizona. This, this happens just, all over. This happens in the entire Western Hemisphere. <laughs> okay, so Canada down to South America. How did this, as you said, 122nd year this year for the Christmas bird count? How did this start? Kind of, what's the history behind this, Chrissy? It's an interesting history. Uh, just prior to the 20th century, uh, there was this big competition. It was like an annual. Uh, holiday seasonal thing that hunters would do and they'd go out basically on a designated day and shoot everything feathered and fur they can find and bring back their trophies to show off Uh, you know after a little while scientists were getting concerned people were getting concerned because they weren't seeing as many birds and they saw these pop these you know the numbers drop and um, a man by the name of Frank Chapman came along and he's like hey I want to propose we do we count birds instead of shoot them. (laughs) So in 1900, the first Christmas bird count happened and it was in a couple different places, uh, New Brunswick and Ontario. And they started, you know, with a small group of people counting birds in this 15 mile diameter circle. (laughs) And it was, was it just one circle back then? Uh, It was a couple different circles, but uh, like the first one, of course, yeah, it started with the one and then we had the two and then it went on from there. But uh, yeah, and you know, and the whole idea was to start counting now before these, you know, before we see even you know more changes. Sure. Because trend data, you know, is really useful when uh, trying to track what's happening to a population, be it birds or any other animal. 
and not only monitoring the animals, but you know, you're monitoring the habitat they're in too. It's an indicator that something's going wrong. So it's great for um, helping us uh, stay afloat and uh, give us that indicator when we need to start looking at things and for conservation management purposes. So, Chrissy, what locations, I know you mentioned there's 40 locations. 41. 41, <laughs> excuse me, around the state of Arizona. But can you highlight some of those locations for us? I mean, because oh, sure. they're, they're all over the state. Correct. Correct. I mean, we have some up in Flagstaff. And like all your major cities, we have one in Tucson. We have a handful of them here in the Phoenix area, the Phoenix greater area, for example. We have one in Cave Creek. Uh, we have a new one that we have restarted uh, a few years ago in Lake Pleasant, or it's called the Lake Pleasant Christmas Count, and it covers part of Lake Pleasant and the town around there. Uh, we have the Hacienda uh, Christmas Bird Count, which is in Wickenburg, Arizona, and that's the one I've probably been the most involved with over the last 16 years. Uh, and then we have uh, one on the Salt River. Uh, we also have a one out in Buckeye. We have a helix. It's called the Gila Count and the Trace Rios Count. Um, but yeah, there are a good number of them just you know within each you know portion of the state. But I mean, with forty-one of these fifteen-mile radius circles, I mean the ma the majority of the state's covered, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, I mean the different habitats, the different. Uh, different areas of the state yeah it's well covered distributed just distributed <laughs> so why or like how do you choose a a location how do you choose a location well you know it really depends on a couple different things uh, you know one for that person to recognize hey we should really have a circle here and it could be based on uh, need we have for wanting to cover birds in a certain you know habitat uh, it could be, it also depends on accessibility. Can we even survey this? And you know, do we have somebody willing to take that over and help organize the volunteers we need for that count each year? Okay, so let's say we have our circle. We, <laughs> we're, we're ready to go out on the bird count. What happens once we're out there? All right, once all the volunteers have you know, been uh, gathered and assigned to their certain areas within that circle, uh, you basically, and it depends, uh, each surveyor might go out there for part of the day, um, you know, just the morning, just the afternoon, maybe a little bit in the evening, or you've got the folks that will be out there before the crack of dawn all the way until the end of the day, because in that those dark hours pre-dawn, you know, you want to try to capture owls you might find. So yeah, you basically you know, get up before the crack of dawn, grab your coffee and your snacks for the day, meet up with your groups if you're going to meet with people, and uh, head out to the area you're supposed to go start counting birds and you're all you know you're given data forms that you complete and fill out and at the end of the day which is really fun and this was pre-pandemic before we were not doing these now but we'd all get together at the end of the day to share our stories figure out how many birds we all saw within that circle and kind of gets a little competitive in areas like hey I got this many species no I got 110 species you know so forth and it and then also sharing some of those like uh, people and bird stories while you're out there and the goal is literally just to see how many birds you see, right, in the different species, well, and they, they jot it down in a journal? or Well, I mean, that's like the fun side of it, to try to find as many <laughs> birds as you can. But, uh, you know, you're out there trying to cover an area thoroughly to count the birds that are there and to get a really good idea so that it could be used for this, you know, for the trend data analysis that will happen. And... Uh, but yeah, so it's, you know, it's, there's two kind of sides to it. Yeah, there's a little bit of com competition side and then of trying to find as many birds as you can, but then also still to be thorough and cover the same area and make sure you're not missing anything and um, get those numbers as accurate as you can. Okay, it's I'm a big census, in other words. I'm sure you have a plan for this, but I'm going to ask because I, you know, I'm not a birder. So how do you know you're not counting the same bird twice <laughs> like well, what if it just flies over to another area You're like oh i got another one like 
<laughs> right. And that's really a good point because, yeah, that could happen, especially like with raptors, for example. You've got two people that are in the same area, and there could be uh, a peregrine falcon that's flying through like one or two, three areas, and everybody counts it same bird. And that's actually part of the evening, too, when everybody gets together to talk about it. Like, hey, when you were here, did you see this bird or this bird? For some of those oddball birds that you might not see that many of. And then it's also up to the compiler to to look over the data and realize, yeah, okay, they had you know this many. I'm going to use red-tailed hawks as an example because there's a lot of red-tailed hawks out there. And okay, and these people did too. And these two groups are really close together. So you know, um, you might contact them saying, okay, what time of the day do you remember when you had those? Uh -huh. Or or make the decision of knowing from like say, I go out to my I covered my entire circle the week before and kind of get an idea of what is out there. And that really does help when trying to, you know, go, okay, I don't think there were 110 between these two groups <laughs> in, within that area. And then you come up with, you know, the number from based on the different times of going out there and what each group had. And you might take a high count for, for that. Okay, so they'll figure it It'll out. It'll figure like, it out, yeah. If and there's a super rare bird and his number is really high, <laughs> like, right, oh, right. we might need to revisit this. Yeah, we had a, yeah. Yeah, yes, yes, exactly. And if that habitat's connected in any way where there, there is that possibility of them seeing the same bird. Okay, so, I mean, we you kind of mentioned some species, but, I mean, what, I mean, what you're really looking for any bird species mm -hmm. on the count. I mean... But are there, can you talk about some of the species that you'll see or that are pretty common or even what are some of the really rare runs to see? Hmm. You know, I don't, you know, it's not like necessarily looking for that rare bird and. You're just looking for a bird. We're looking for every <laughs> bird out there. Matter. And they all are unique and have that awesome, you know, uh, that awesome time of being out there w watching them uh, that you, but yeah. Um, Hmm, let me think about this one. Well, you don't discriminate. If, I don't discriminate. No, you a, are counting. If every, there is a yeah. bird, we will count right, you. Right, right. Yes, yes. You are counting every single bird that's out there, be it a house sparrow, be it a rock pigeon, be it a um, really unique, unusual bird that would be there. Because, yeah, birds don't read, you know, read the rule book. And they will, I mean, some of these oddball birds that show up, these rarities, as we like to say, during migration, they might end up staying here for the winter. And it's, you know, it, it's not normal, but um, yeah, it's cool when we get to go see those. But yeah, we are counting every single bird that we can find because that's what makes it a thorough census. I just think it's fascinating that you can, and again, you're knowledgeable in, in this field, but that you can look at a bird and go, yep, uh, rock pigeon, got it. We're like, <laughs> I wouldn't know. Like what, you know, I, I don't, you know, I'd, I'd have to like look at a book and... Well, you know, you can go out there with us, and before you know it, you are going to be able to identify a good handful of birds just from your first time out. Because <laughs> every bird is unique, and in the way they move, the way they behave, uh, where you're going to find them, usually, uh, is, you know, what real also helps when you're out there identifying birds. So, yeah, again, like, if you feel like you don't have the experience, you can get out there, go out there with experienced people and learn. And before you know it, you're going to be that person teaching some somebody that's new to birding on how to get out there and count birds for the Christmas bird count. I don't want to hold anybody back with my lack of bird knowledge now. <laughs> <laughs> you would not. You would not. Well, that really, I mean, And segues. any set of eyes can find birds. You know, <laughs> As long true. as you can see and hear, you, you just point them out and say, hey, okay. I, I, I just heard that. What's that? And you end up. I'll be the know, spotter. Yeah. You can be my uh, <laughs> that works experience. Too. Got another one. And it is fun getting out there. You know, the people experience and watching these birds out there. I mean, I, I love getting out there and watching a huge flock of sparrows go through a creosote flat. You know, it's 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 unique. It's something that is to me kind of special to experience. And even if you know some people, they are considered some common birds that you're going to see. But getting to see those same birds each year in the same places, or sometimes in a few other new places, is a special experience. So if somebody wants to help. If they want mm -hmm. to get involved, they can. Yes. 
And as I'm understanding, we will take any experience level. <laughs> <laughs> so how does that work? If someone wants to help out, wants to get involved, um, what should they do? And obviously, it sounds like they shouldn't be scared if they know nothing or maybe they know a lot. Right. Uh, well, there's a couple different ways. Uh, for one, uh, National Audubon, they support and have been um, managing the Christmas bird counts for since the beginning. Uh, you could go to their, if you're outside of Arizona and you want to help and you just go, you know, I guess you can Google National Audubon CBC and it'll bring you to their website. On this website, they have all the details about Christmas bird counts and where and how to get involved. Now, if you're in Arizona, Arizona Field Ornithologists, we uh, are an organ, and I'm part of that organization. Uh, we are, are basically an organ organization trying to find out more about Arizona birds. And one of the things we do is support the Christmas bird count. And we have a couple people that help organize all the compilers for each circle. And uh, we have on our website a list of all the Christmas bird counts with the dates and the compilers to contact. So you can take a look of you know which one you want to do and contact that compiler from that website. And the website's azfo.org. Okay, azfo.org. And that's probably the best spot to go if you want to get involved. In Arizona. In Arizona. Or correct. maybe even find out if there's one happening in your part of the state. Uh, correct. Yeah, it lists all of them okay. within the state. And it has, them broken, has it broken down by, you know, closest town. So you'll be able to see that and then go, oh, okay, that's that one. Yeah, I'm by Wickenburg. Oh, I want to get involved with the Hacienda Christmas bird count and go from there. And then you contact the compiler. They'll ask you and let them know, you know what your skill level is, if you want a bird alone, uh, if you want a bird with a group. And they'll help designate you to a certain area within that circle. And, of course, uh, make sure you have the data forms you need and any instruction. Also, Arizona field ornithologists have put on a training video on how to do the Christmas bird counts. So we have that available on a YouTube link. And you can go to that and see the instruction on how to become a better Christmas bird counter. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay, I'll be watching the training video. Yes. I will be a beginner. And I will need somebody with me because I don't want to mess up any of the data. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> and there, yeah, there we go. And we'll set you up with somebody. Perfect. <laughs> I am ready to go Christmas bird counting. Um, how critical are these volunteers, Chrissy, to getting this work done? Bec I mean, because this is, this is a big undertaking. And this is yeah. a lot of work. And it involves a lot of people. I mean, you're counting every bird. Oh, gosh. <laughs> to put it simple, uh, Without volunteers, this huge community science effort wouldn't happen. I mean, the vast amount of knowledge we've gained on bird populations because of the help of volunteers has been the drive behind a lot that we do and recognize that needs, you know, attention or, you know, a good conservation management plan. I mean, it's amazing what the, you know, each individual has, you know, contributed to this project and many other community science type projects. Well, and this data is really important. Talk to us about, you know, what happens to it, wh what do you do with it, and how it helps, you know, you do what you do. Mm -hmm. I think I mentioned a little bit on how we use it for trend data. Sure. And by, I mean, with how many years of this trend data uh, we have, you you get an idea of like which birds are doing better than others or you know you know what birds aren't you know in certain places anymore and that will kind of start a okay let's look at this closer let's look at that certain species let's look at this habitat or does it have to do with maybe they're not at their winter habitat if we can't find anything wrong there maybe something's going on with their breeding habitat so it's kind of a you know it's more than just knowing if there's birds there or not it's kind of uh, letting us know the health of that habitat or there might be something else going on that you know we have to investigate a little bit more and hopefully we can do something to you know put a plan in to help that or to restore that and some of these volunteers have been working with mm -hmm. you for quite a long time isn't that the case oh definitely um yeah there's people that when i, I started doing christmas bird counts about 2004 was my first one and I mean, there's been people that the people that I you know first started with, gosh, they were there 20 years before I you know started with them, and they're still there <laughs> working on these counts. Uh, yeah, we have some individuals I know that are involved 37 years. Uh, I was looking at the numbers on how long they've been doing the Hacienda count, and you know, it's kind of you know, yeah, it's 
it really makes it even that more special when you've got that factor with the people that are involved in it and well and they're pretty knowledgeable, knowledgeable about yeah. their area too yep. aren't they yes they are and that really helps as well so you know if like say i do have somebody that um knows that area they're going to be able to tell me things like when i came into either that circle or another one like hey you're going to really want to check out this this and that because these, this is where you're going to find these birds and we need to continue counting in that same way so having that knowledge and you know passing it on to other people that are working on it really helps keep that you know data collection as consistent as possible and for some, I mean, this is all ages, too, that are involved. And for some, mm -hmm. it's, like you said, families are involved. You've got everyone from, you know, a young a young kid to uh, their dad to their grandfather, maybe even. I mean, it yes. all, every, everyone's getting involved here. Oh, yes. And schools, school groups will get involved, count schools on their, you know, school property. I have that go on in Wickenburg. Uh, yeah, I had my daughter involved with me for years. And... We were involved in this uh, nature ranger program that we developed, and we had a group of you know kids out there each year for at the beginning of this when this program it's first started, and yeah, and these kids really learned fast too, and they all contributed. I mean, they were finding birds that we needed to get on those data sheets. So, uh, and yeah, and then you've got the family groups that go out there, and. It's like a special moment when you guys can, you know, work together to do something that's really making a difference. For people that don't know, I mean, Arizona is considered a top birding state, right? I mean, yes. if you're outside of Arizona or maybe you live in Arizona and you're just not very big into birding. But talk to us a little about that because we're here counting every bird. But this is just <laughs> cool as well because this is something that people – come from other parts of the country even world to do mm -hmm. is see birds in arizona correct there are unique birds that you can see a good handful of them all in one place international type spots there's southeastern arizona which is a hot spot in the u.s uh, for birders uh, gosh down there you can see up to 16 species of hummingbirds it's actually the most hummingbirds you can see anywhere in the U.S. I mean, there are countries with more hummingbirds, but yeah, in Arizona, that's the only place you're going to find in the U.S. with that many hummingbirds. Uh, there's just, you know, because of the unique, diverse, gosh, uh, habitats that we have, also ups the numbers that you're going to be able to find. Of course, how many you find can depend on and where and when. Um, it, well, it depends on where and when. But, um, yeah, yeah, it's very unique. Well, what, how many species of birds are there in Arizona? Do we have that number? Um, officially, uh, what we consider uh, recognized are 567 birds. Okay, that's yeah. a lot. And, yeah, again, like, yeah, it really depends on uh, what time of the year and when and where you're looking on what you're going to find. I mean, there's places you could find 120 birds at once. Uh, depending if it's like a nice, lush, riparian area, the you know, with your cottonwood, willing forests encasing like a beautiful, you know, regular year-round flow river. Uh, yeah, you're going to find a lot of species right there all at once. Um, but yeah, you do have to move around to see all these birds. Move around throughout Arizona to find them. <laughs> you're so good at these these bird names. I can't. <laughs> every time we have a someone a, a birding on and they say all these names, I'm just, I don't know, it just fascinates me. You're gonna, I, the, when you're on Jeopardy, Chrissy, with the bird category, <laughs> you're just going to kill it. I don't think I've mentioned that many names, but we can start. Well, you've impressed me, so it doesn't take much. Um, what, oh, great. What, is the, what is the rarest bird hmm. that you have seen on one of these bird counts? Hmm. I know we don't discriminate. We count all the birds, but... I know, because they're all special to me. Yeah. <laughs> but is there like a super rare, rare one that you've only seen... Like once or something that you've seen, you're like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Or, at, mm. and at the late night, yeah, there's been a few cool ones. I mean, I would, I, they're unusual. Maybe I guess because I've seen them in other places in you know in larger numbers, uh, like brown thrashers. Once in a while, I get lucky enough to find one of those. And uh, one time, had a tundra swan show up. Uh, those don't aren't commonly here. And. Uh, Gosh, uh, yeah, yellow-bellied sapsucker a couple times along the Hacienda, which is really neat. Uh, that's another bird that you won't usually find uh, here. But yeah, um, 
But I kind of find that, again, I find all those birds unique, so I kind of get excited when I get to go out and see those phantom pepper calling in the winter or <laughs> cactus wrens you know, yapping at me for being just in their space. Uh, yeah, so, but yeah, it, it is exciting when you see the rarities, but yeah, they're all. And then you're the hit at the late night counting party <laughs> afterwards, uh, right? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of uh, really well-skilled volunteers and lucky volunteers that really seem to be like magnets for rarity. So I, I, I would say I'm not. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> do they have to take like proof of that? Take a picture? It's like how do they, we know they're legit? Like <laughs> <laughs> it's the honor system. Okay, right. But yes, it we do need documentation in one form or the other. It's ideal and wonderful if you can get a photo because, you know, that should be semi-easy. Just about everybody has some kind of device that can take a picture. and Or a recording of the bird calling or singing. Oh. That also helps because you can hit record on a smartphone real easy these days and, you know, get capture that. Uh, but if you don't have those two pieces of documentation, you do a write-up of what you saw. And based on what you saw in your experience with that particular bird, it'll be decided upon by, you know, the folks <laughs> that we <laughs> send it off to the, the committee if that was a legit sighting. But okay. Got you. Okay, good and to you know. And you always know the ones that are. It, but it, that doesn't I have never sure, seen that sure. happen. I've never seen that happen. Everybody, it's, yeah, it's all honor system. Gotcha. Um, is there, do you have, like, any, so you've been doing this since 2004, right, here in Arizona? For the Christmas bird count. For the Christmas yes. bird count. Here in Arizona. Do you have, like, a, a unique experience or a unique story from all your years in the field counting that kind of stands out to you? I know. Here's one that I thought was really cool. Uh, there's an area that I do every year, and I was driving down the street, and I happened to be in my game fish truck, and the woman on the street stopped me, and she's like, oh, what are you, are you looking for something today? And I go, yes, I actually am. I'm looking for birds. She's like, I've got a bird feeder here. <laughs> and I'm like, really? And so she invited me to watch her bird feeder for a little bit, and then I got to tell her about the Christmas bird counts. And you know, seven years later, she's still helping out with the Christmas bird counts every year now. So um, sharing that experience uh, with her of what I was doing, you know, brought in a volunteer who also has become a really good birder now. So yeah. Oh, look at that. Things like that. Um, Is she a counter now too? Or does counter. she just let you come to her feeder? No, she counts and she sends me the data. And when you're out there looking for these birds, like what are some of the different tools that people are using to help them with is just binoculars and I mean talk to us about some of that um, yeah starters you definitely want to have your binoculars um, and a hot cup of coffee because usually winter mornings are cold <laughs> or tea or hot chocolate <laughs> okay good to know <laughs> and really warm and yeah layers when you're working in Arizona okay we'd make a list here Let <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's make our list um, but yeah it's basic you know as long as you got your eyes and your ears and a pair of binoculars or a scope or something to be able to kind of view birds that are a little bit farther away it's a really huge help and you know you don't have to get really expensive pairs of binoculars there's some very inexpensive binoculars or binoculars you can borrow from different parts like if you go to the hacienda river preserve they have binoculars you can use there um, there's all kinds of ways to get those uh, so it's really a simple set of what you need to get out there okay binoculars warm clothing hot chocolate yep <laughs> <laughs> don't need a lot of experience we will help you you will teach them um, let's recap here a little bit. Christmas bird count. This is December. This is every year. Uh, 2021 is the 122nd year. Correct. But no matter when people are listening to this, December 14th to, to January, right? January 5th. It's January December, 5th. December 14th to January 5th. Okay, that is the Christmas bird count. And again, if people want to get involved, if they want to go counting with you or help out in any way, mm -hmm. uh, what do they do? They can go to um, azfo.org, um, Arizona Field Orner Ornithologists help support National Audubon's effort. Uh, and we have a list of all the Christmas bird count sites that you can participate in with the dates right next to them. So you can, you know, decide what day would work for you. Perfect. And the compiler's information's right there. So you can contact the compiler right after you get that off that page. 
Okay. And that's if you're in Arizona. If you're not, just go to the National Audubon site and they will have a list on how to participate in CBCs anywhere else outside. Yeah, because if you're listening to us outside of Arizona or if you don't live in Arizona or you have another state that you have another home, there are Curses Bird Counts probably in your state. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, outside of the U.S. as well. Okay, good deal. Good to know. Chrissy, anything we missed today? Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, well, I'm... I'm I, I'm sad. I'm impressed. I'm ready to go bird counting with you. All right. So I've got you down for uh, this weekend. Saturday, you'll be at the preserve at 8 a.m. Okay. Eight, right. I guess uh, 8 a.m. it is. I guess I'll bring the hot chocolate. Oh, thank uh, you. And you're set to go. Thanks so much, Kristen, for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate you having me here today. Thanks for listening. Visit us online at www.azgfd.gov.